Okay, so first off I'm gonna apologize by saying this was actually meant to be a review of Fast Five, but the funny story is when I went to the theater with my friends and family, um, the movie was actually sold out, so we opted to go to prom instead. <coughs> Bef now, a few months back when I saw the trailer for prom, I actually, I actually expected it to suck, and for many reasons, I mean like, one it's Disney making a movie about, you know, high school life, and when it, and Disney probably, you know, Disney always goes for the family friendly type film, so I was expecting like a movie that's trying to portray high school life, but they'll add in a bunch of like stereotypes and cliches that don't actually work in real life, so that's what I was expecting. And when I actually watched Prom, I'm not going to say it was a good movie, okay, because it, you know, it actually, I was actually right with the whole, it stuck to cliches and it was corny and all that, but uh, it wasn't as bad as I thought it would be, I mean, like, I expected it to be a lot worse, but for what it is, it's definitely, definitely better than what I expected it to be, and with a bunch of friends and watching this movie, it is actually kind of fun, because this is the kind of movie where, since it's so predictable, you can actually make fun of it as it goes along. Maybe uh, maybe when by yourself, it's not that good, but nah, that's up to you. So, <clears throat> speaking seriously, Prom is doesn't have a essential story to it. It's more of a, it's a combination of several unre unrelated stories that are about um, high schoolers going to prom. And me being a high schooler myself, and on a side note, my prom is... Um, uh, in seven days. Uh, this movie actually was somewhat relatable and somewhat not relatable. Uh, and I'll explain why, because in this movie, I, ex I actually expected it to be, you know, really, like, far-fetched, like, like, it has not, uh, th these people, like, have no idea how high school works, like, they actually have some legit problems that, like, I can actually relate to, like, the Asian girl, what's her name? May, I think? I, I don't think... I think that was on the IMDb, what they listed her as, but... <clears throat> the Asian char girl character is worrying about college, and she's worrying about, like, going to a certain college, like, picking which one, which is actually a relatable problem for me, and other stuff, but there were some far-fetched things, and I'll get to them when I go o over each story. And the far-fetched things were far-fetched because they were corny. I mean, they were cliches, because you have the cliche of, like, the biker guy, like, and then the cliche of the class president who always gets A's, and then blah, 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 blah. It's, it's those cliches that make the movie not seem realistic. Like, when they actually try to get, um, give out, like, actual proms that high schoolers go through, it, it seems like it knows what it's trying to be, but it also puts in cliches because it's Disney, so it kind of kills it. Now, um, now I'm going to go over each story in prom, because there's a bunch of stories. And each story has, you know, its, its own characters, its own arc, and some characters overlap into some other arcs, and um, <coughs> uh, there's no actual story to prom. I mean, there's no central story, like there's no like central main characters that are trying to get to prom. I mean, it's just a bunch of different stories now. Um, I'm gonna start with the least important ones. Uh, probably the least, very least important story was the guy who looks like a bloated Kurt Cobain or a, the. If you ever seen the move music video Man in the Box, the lead singer he looks like that guy in Man in the Box, but fatter and he acts stupider and his storyline is that he it's his, his is comedy like he has a girlfriend girlfriend from Canada named Athena who looks like a model and another like one of his friends doesn't believe him and you know you know how this is gonna end like uh, it seems like she's not real but at the prom oh she's real it's like you know you could see that coming it's not very interesting and he just comes off weird instead of funny. I mean, like, he has some funny moments, but most of the time he's just like, it's just like, are you okay, dude? It's like, and move, moving on. The next story in the movie is probably going to be 
This I call him Forever Alone guy, but I know his his name is Lloyd, and I call him that because he his character represents teenagers who can't um who have trouble finding dates to prom, and actually sort of related to this guy in a little way, and his character arc was okay. I mean. The problem with his arc was that he his arc was played up for laughs, whereas like you kind of expected it to be a little bit ser more serious. But uh, his kind of story, I don't know. I expected it to be more serious because you know he he was a guy who's never you know been talkative to the uh, student body, and this is like his first time he's going out and people are saying no to him. And he's experiencing like rejection for the first time. Like it's kind of serious stuff, but they kind of made it, you know, funny. But yeah, he, his arc was fine. Let's see. The next arc would be there was a lot of arcs in here. The next arc I would I guess would be the couple, like the the Asian girl and her boyfriend who looks like Mick Lovin from Superbad. Um, theirs was actually pretty short, and you don't really see that much. Like. Basically, their arc is they're going out, you know, all that. And the girl got accepted at college in New York, and her boyfriend got accepted in college in Michigan. So their arc is she's trying to find a way to tell them that they can't go to the same school. And uh, it was okay. I mean, like uh, my cousin pointed out, like I didn't even uh, notice this, but then, like my cousin pointed out that. The Asian girl character was kind of a stereotype, the, the stereotypical Asian character where it's like, oh, she always has to be perfect, I always have to overanalyze things, and she always has to panic, and blah, 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 blah. And I kind of, I kind of agree. And it's not because, like, and it's not really her fault. I mean, it's because of her, of the time length she's in this movie. Like, she, like she comes in once in a while. Their character, the arc comes in once in a while. So they are not really given enough time to develop. But overall, the arc wasn't that bad. I mean, like, uh, I just wish it was a little longer. So you know, makes them, allows them more time to develop. But yeah, it was fine. And there's two more arcs. The which which one's more important? Okay, I'll, I'll go with the, I'll go with the other one first. The next arc would be a love square. And this one was actually the most ridiculous because, like, basically what this arc was, it was a love square between uh, this nerd guy, who I forgot his name, he looks like Josh Hutcherton, this girl named Simone, this guy on the, I think it was the cross, this one guy named Tyler, and this one girl named Jordan. And Tyler and Jordan are, they're a couple who are going to be prom king queen. And they're... And the love story, I'm not going to really say anything because, you know, it's a love square, so you just use your imagination. Their arc was just like, I don't know, I, I, it, as, a per, as like someone who goes to high school still, I don't really like, I don't really see that on campus. Like, I don't know if I'm just being naive, but it just kind of seemed too unrealistic for me. And the whole, like, there's like a showdown at, at the prom, at like the climax. And where I'm gonna spoil this part, where like Tyler Jordan are named prom king queen, and the queen rejects the king's dance, and then Simone rejects the king. I mean, like it, 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 it's kind of like they're kind of pushing it with the whole like the conflicts. That's what I mean. But nothing came close to like. Here's another spoiler. Nothing came came close for over the top. A dramatization than the nerd guy's like con confession like the spoiler here is that there's a scene where it's like the night of prom and the nerd guy's in the tree and he tells her to tell Simone that he loves her and I was like because when you think about it they're still in high school and when I last checked the movie said that they were sophomore so it's like they're not even like 17 they're like oh sorry they're like 15 or yeah 15 it it's those kind of things where it just raises alarms so overall I, I didn't think there's their arc was you know that interesting like I mean it was the most ridiculous but it's like 
Yeah, it was. It wasn't really interested in this arc. Now, one final arc is probably the main arc of them all, and it's the arc where it follows the the lead. What's the class president? What's her name? Um, it's a girl from Scream Four. I think her name in this movie was like Nova, like Nova Six. <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> her arc is she's the class president, and she wants this to be the perfect prom. Emphasize the rainbow. So. She wants this to be the perfect prom, and uh, there's a scene earlier in the movie where Tyler and Jordan are inside the shack that holds all the prom decorations, and and they accidentally that the guy puts in candles, and they accidentally forget to uh, blow out one candle, like one candle, and it burns down the whole shack, which is kind of stupid, unless it fell on grass. So well, I don't know. So um, it burns down. So the principal assigns this other guy who looks like War and Peace from Sky High. It's not him, but I, I, he looks like him. And he's playing like the similar role from Sky High. So War and Peace, I'm going to call him War and Peace because I don't remember his name. So War and Peace, he's basically the stereotypical bad bad boy. Like he, he drives a motorcycle, he has the leather jacket, he has the, the gloves with the no uh, finger straps on it and blah blah blah. And he's a uh, he's assigned to help the decoration, help Nova make the more decorations, or else he'll be what was it expelled or held back. Uh, either one of the two. It was a punishment. And uh, on the side note, the principal looks like he kind of reminded me of Will Ferrell when he was dressed up as the architect for the Matrix uh, MTV Movie Awards. Just watch it, yeah, you'll understand. Anyways. So, you kind of know where the storyline's going, like the bad guy and the good girl, they hate each other at first, but yet they're forced together to work to, to, to work it, on something. So you kind of know where this is going, like this has been done so many times, like they're going to work, they're going to hate each other, and then over time they're going to reveal stuff about each other, and then they'll learn to love each other, and then there'll be a misunderstanding on one side, and then there'll be the depressing point of the movie. And then the climax is one one of the characters will have an inspirational speech to one of them. One of the characters, one of the two will snap out of it and go after the other person and then they'll have a kiss at prom, I guess. And that's how, how it happened. Exactly. They work, Nova and War and Peace, they work together in, for prom. They grew to learn each other. Nova learned that like the guy of War and Peace was not that bad. He was just misunderstood, and War and Peace learned that Nova wasn't perfect. She was, you know, she worked for where she where she got. And the misunderstanding came from Nova's dad, who said that War and Peace um, should not bring her down. So if he if he likes her, then he should just back off. You, know, you you've heard that argument before. And the inspirational speech came from War and Peace's mom, who said that he's not terrible and that he's a good person and you should go after the girl and they have their kiss up prom so like everything I said happened exactly like everything I thought I I knew this was gonna happen first first five minutes into the movie and boom like it happened so actually the worst arc out of the five arcs I said is okay the worst arc is still the arc with the the fat Kurt, Kurt Cobain guy, but the second worst arc would be the main arc, because you already know what's going to happen. Technically, the best arc of the mob would be Forever Alone Guys, because his was the most relatable, actually. Overall, the movie prom, I mean, like, there's a lot of proms to uh, the movie prom. I mean, the acting sometimes hokey, and the lines are cliched. It's corny. It's kind of unrealistic, and... The actors don't really look like they're high schoolers and blah 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 but it's not as bad as you would think it is because I went with a group of friends and we actually all had the same idea that it was gonna be bad turned out it wasn't that bad so I suggest at least watching it first like I know a lot of people won't watch it but I'm just saying watch it first before you make a decision because I didn't think it was that bad